here with me. Welcome to another Thursday Live with Carrie here at Whimsy Stamps. So let's see. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday, those of you that were celebrating here in the U.S. and that you've recovered from all the indulging and in our bountiful blessings. <laughs> That's often in the form of uh, a yummy feast. So <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be hungry again for, for a while. But I wanted to uh, showcase some of the red rubber stamps today because over uh, the Black Friday shopping and the Cyber Monday, the red rubber uh, was on some fantastic deals. So hopefully several of you had a chance to take advantage of uh, all, all the great savings that was going on last weekend. So let's go ahead and change our camera view and take a look at what we're going to make today. All right, so here is our project. And like I said, I really wanted to focus on the some of the red rubber stamps. So some of you may not have uh, heard this yet, but coming soon, there's going to be a section on the website called Last Chance. And in that section on the website, you're going to find a lot of your uh, favorite uh, red rubber and really all kinds of products. But um, if you've had your eye on any red rubber stamps, you're going to want to go to that section of the website and get those because what last chance is meaning is that uh, once they are gone, sold out, they are gone forever. They're not going to be restocked. So if you've had your eye on some, you're going to want to uh, grab those sooner rather than later. So on this particular stamp, it when I made this card, there we still had this in stock, but over Cyber Monday, it did sell out. So if you have not uh, had this one yet, you're going to um, find several other bird stamps and uh, just all kinds of scenery stamps that will work just as well as the one I'm using today. So let's take a look at all the products that I used for this particular card. So like I said, I did use the Cardinal Birdhouse, but this one is no longer available. But there are several others. There's one called the Chickadee and Berries that I thought would uh, look particularly well on this design. Uh, the Christmas Doves. And just really, there are so many, so many. Even you could do a scene um, of a farm or a barn or just so many fun things. I also used the Snow Family. We use this in our hop. So if you didn't... Uh, catch our November hop you can go back and watch those videos and all the design team we made uh, lots of cards using this particular stamp set but I used it for our sentiment today from our home to yours and I'm also going to be using the slimline pine set um, Recently, I did a video using this piece, but today I'm going to be using this one, and I also use the Happy Holidays. So this is a great set that's so versatile, you can use it in lots of different ways. For my dies, I'm going to be using the Stitched Ovals. I'm also going to be using this set, and I apologize, I don't have the packaging for this one, but it's called the Quick Strip Die Set. And then I'm also going to be using some paper from the farmhouse paper pad. So I'm going to be using this dark wood, but there are several others in this set that would be great for uh, this style of card. I am just going to quickly refresh my screen to see if I can uh, see everyone's comments. Let's see here. There we go. All right. Hello, Irina. She's always here on Facebook. It's so good to see you. I'm also going to check out on YouTube and see if I can get to the um, get to the comments there as well. OK, there we go. I can see all the comments. That's great. Oh, great. I'm glad you caught me live. <laughs> now, you're a small male for Zoe. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. All right. So to, to get this project going. We're going to need to stamp our uh, red rubber image on watercolor paper. And my favorite watercolor paper is this one right here. It's called Arches. And I uh, just get the one that's green. There's several others. There's a red one and a blue one. Some of them are cold press, heat, all these different kinds. But the green was just, I just go by the color. This is my favorite one. It is a little pricey, but I find it worth it. It's a little sturdier, so the water moves really well on this paper. All right, so I stamped my image 
and VersaFine Claire. And then I heat embossed it with clear embossing powder. So I want to show you real quickly what that looks like. Because if you've never stamped on watercolor paper before, you, you might uh, get in there and think, oh no, something's not working. So I wanted to actually show you exactly what that looks like. Let me grab my, here it is, get my embossing powder ready. Okay, so I'm just going to ink up my stamp. And you're going to notice When, when you first stamp it, it's going to have a really pale gray. And because watercolor paper has a texture to it, you might have to stamp a few times to get a nice solid image. And you're going to have to, to press in there. But it doesn't have as dark of a look as it would stamping on regular white stamping paper. So I'm really pressing that in there. All right. So we've, we've got it right here, but it, I want to show you the magic that happens and why it's so important to, to go over it with the clear embossing powder. Clean up here so I don't spill anything. And real quickly, you'll have to carry my heat gun for just a moment. But this is really going to just come to life on this. See how it's, it's just not a real vibrant stamp until you uh, heat up or vibrant ink. Your color just doesn't look as vibrant. And then see how, see how it just comes to life. So I find when I'm watercoloring and I'm stamping, I, going over it in the clear embossing powder, is going to make all the difference in the world to your finer, fi final project. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that real quick. So I'm going to show you some, some of my tips for uh, quick and easy watercoloring. So Irina, I saw that you said good evening. Where are you in the world? Because it's lunchtime here in uh, Texas in the U.S. <laughs> I am using a uh, media mat. This is just a plastic uh, palette. It's uh, nothing special, just a piece of plastic. And today I'm going to be using Zig watercolor pens. So I'm going to bring in my water source. And this is just regular tap water. And I always like to have a piece of paper towel nearby just to tap off if I need to. All right, so the colors I'm going to be starting with are my reds. So I'm going to use uh, two of the reds here. It is, let me get the colors right, carmine red and wine red. And on my palette, I'm just going to put down a little bit of the well, I'll call it ink because it comes out of a pen, but it, it's the watercolor that comes out of your watercolor pens. And I like to just go ahead and uh, saturate my paper. I'm going to start with my pretty cardinals. And I like to get that paper good and saturated because that's what's going to make your color move. So right now, I'm basically, the only image that I'm getting uh, wet is the image that I'm working on. But another plus to using your white embossing powder is that you're going to get, um, it's going to hold that water inside the image. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit, and I'm just going to tap it onto the places where I want that lightest ink. Or, or lightest color. And then I'm just going to wait and that water is going to help it move around. Now I'm going to come in with some of my wine color red and in those places where I want it to be darker, I'm going to add just a little bit of that darker red. And again, I'm going to let my 
water there, do the movement and it's just going to move that around. So I find watercoloring to be just an incredible, you know, just relaxing. And it's watercolor is not an exact science. It's not like um, coloring, like with Copic markers. It's going to look different each time because how that water um, moves in the paper is going to affect things every time. So you're never going to get the exact same look over and over. But if you do want something to appear darker, you can let it dry a little bit and then come back with a little more and dab that in and that's going to darken those areas for you. So red rubber images are often a little more detailed. Now I'm not going to do this one for you. I'm going to go ahead and work on the birdhouse. And for the birdhouse, I'm just using one color and that's my mid brown. And same thing, I'm going to go ahead and saturate my image. Let those fibers uh, soak in that water. And I'm going to do over on this side of my image first instead of getting over close to my bird because my bird's still a little wet and I don't want my brown to ooze in. But by I started to say this and then got distracted, but by using your embossing powder, it's going to uh, make a little ridge there so your your uh, color doesn't jump over it and go into that other image. So it kind of helps with that. But same thing, I'm going to lay down my color just where the shadow should be. And the detail of a red rubber stamp, it often shows you where the shadow is just in the artwork. So that, that makes it nice rather than having a, a big image that uh, is, has more open space. These images are going to give you a lot of uh, help in telling you where that color should be laid down. And once you kind of lay down your color, you just be a little patient and that water is going to start moving it. I don't know if you can see it, but see how it's already starting to move up the, the birdhouse. So my, my lights and darks are going to be taken care of really just by the water moving through the paper. You just lay down your color where the shadow is and then let your, your, uh, the, the water do the rest. So that's one of the great things about watercoloring is you know, the water does a lot of the work. Hopefully I didn't rush this and we're going to get red into it. I... All right, so same thing. Now, I didn't wet this section down first, so I'm going to show you kind of how that looks that way. You can do it that way. Some people choose to watercolor that way. I like to put down my water first, but... Uh, Yeah. And again, I'm just putting uh, my color in there where it should be darkest. There we go. All right. That's pretty much all we need to do. Now, for my leaves, I used uh, two colors. Let's see what I'm using deep green. and regular green and you can see how one of them is uh, kind of more of a forest color and then this one almost has a lot of blue in it and i did that on purpose but i'm going to start with this color and i'm not going to paint all of them just some but i'm just going to get the whole area wet and then i'm going to start with the darker and I'm going to put it right back in here. I'm going to let the water carry that out to the tips. And I did this for all of the green areas. Then I'm going to come back and just right at the very back, add some of that uh, teal color and let the water carry that out as well. And that kind of gives me that, that pine feel. And 
then I just go ahead and help it on out if it didn't go all the way out there. It's gonna, whoops. And you might notice that every now and then I'm tapping off some of my water. When you're water coloring, a lot of it is just learning how to control the water. So sometimes, you know, you don't want to lay down too heavy of a amount of water. So you can just tap off on your paper towel. But getting a feel for how your different paints are going to uh, work with your water and your paper and using the same paper and the same paints all the time will help you get a feel for how those products work. And that, you know, rather than switching between lots of different products, if you really want to, uh, you know, improve on watercoloring as you go along, using the same products will help you get a feel for how those products work. And you'll you'll be able to make decisions in your creating based on those products. And then after you you feel comfortable, then kind of switch it up and you'll be able to compare different products and stuff like that. But if you're just starting out with watercoloring, uh, a tip would be kind of use the same products and get a feel for, for how your products work um, together. And just the joy of watercoloring. It's so fun. All right. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in the uh, yellow. And when you're doing a really tiny space, you don't need to add water first because you really just want to lay down a little color and you don't necessarily need that to uh, move through the paper. So I'm just going to lay a little bit of that yellow down next to my carmine red. And now I'm just going to pull them together and I'm going to make myself a little bit of orange. And you'll need some water in your brush to get that. But you can see how I'm starting to get orange now. Now, you can definitely use an orange pen, but uh, you don't need to. But you can just, there we go. Now he has an orange beak. All right. Now, I did go ahead and do my whole image in the with the leaves and the brown in each image. But uh, the last thing I did was I came back with a little bit of the dull blue and after the rest of my image was completely dry I wanted to put a night sky <laughs> I would love it if you want to tell me there in the chat whether you are an experienced watercolor watercolor person or are you just starting out do you enjoy watercolor um, I'd love to, to have some feedback on that All right, so once my image is dry, and, and I'm, I'm doing this quickly for you. When I, If I was doing this myself, I would put more time between. So I'm just going to start kind of down in here where I haven't already added water. But I'm going to, on this side, go ahead and saturate my paper. And my whole image would be painted when I do, do this step. So I'm going to get my paper wet. Now, I want quite a bit of water in my pen or in my brush. Sorry, <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit on there and then I'm just going to tap in where I want it the darkest. I'm going to tap in just a little bit of that blue. And I'm going to show you on my original here. You can see I purposely made it darker on this side and a little bit lighter on this side. So it appears that the the you're you're looking at it from this direction and the things on this side are darker. So that is how I added my nice guy. And you know, you might have to come back, you might have to bring in more water. You can always add water down on your paper and it will continue to that's how you get that to lighten as it goes out. Rather than putting down with color, you just put it more water in there. And then I did the same thing on the other side. So hopefully this has shown you a kind of a way that you can go about painting a uh, image like this with lots of detail. And it, it really is super easy because the water does most of the work. 
So I hope that uh, answers some questions. Zoe, you say watercolors are fun and uh, you, you do say you dabble in them a little bit. Well, I started out, you know, as a dabbler too, but I just uh, love it. Sometimes when I go on vacation, I will take um, several stamped and embossed images. And when my husband's reading a book or napping, I'll just sit in watercolor. And over time, you definitely get more confident and um, just more fun. But these were this was just some really simple tips that uh, I hope some of you will give a try if you have not um, you know, watercolored in the past because it's it's a fun way, especially with these beautiful uh, images that are in the red rubber. So, OK, I'm going to go ahead and switch a little bit here now that we've done that. And looky here. Boom. I've got one all ready to go for us. OK, because we're going to do something a little different now before we go uh, much further. And I also stamped two of our pine cones from the slim pine and I went ahead and watercolored those as well in the same ways this is the same dark brown as the house and and that and on this one when I cut it out I cut a lot of the greenery out because I'm going to overlap them and I didn't want them to look exactly the same so I did do that I'm just switching here between Facebook so I can see everyone's comments okay not missing anything now, on our dark brown paper from the farmhouse collection, I'm going to use the stitched rectangles. Okay. And on this largest stitched rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and die cut that from the center of my paper. And I did cut this down to A2 size. And one of the things I love about these oval dies is that you get a two for one. So this is the center of the piece that I cut out for my original. And you can see it has the nice detailed stitching too. So I'm definitely going to use this on another project. I love that it gives you that nice stitching on both pieces. All right, I'm going to go ahead and run this through my machine real quick. <laughs> All right, there we go. Ready? So those of you that have watercolor, do you have favorite products that you use? Like I, I use the arches. And when I'm coloring an image that's small like this, I often use the Zig watercolor pens to get my ink. But I also really enjoy using like liquid watercolors as well. But um, on these small images, it's so convenient to, to use the, the pens. OK, so now that I have my centers cut out and like I said, I'm definitely going to save those beautiful stitched uh, images. You're going to see those show up on a future project, I'm sure. I go ahead and you can see here it's not quite centered in there the way I want it. So the way we're going to fix that, I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this edge. There you go. Not much, just about a quarter of an inch. And that's going to give me some wiggle room so that I can uh, position this where I want it. So I'm going to move that over just a little bit. Oops. And now I can have that, you know, just a little more play in getting my birds centered the way I want them. But I didn't want to just put it down like this. I really wanted it to look more like a window. So we are going to pop up this uh, top piece, my frame. So I have a tradition at my house that the day after Thanksgiving is when I decorate for Christmas. So after our kitties went home, all the grandkitties and um, the hustle and bustle at the house, uh, I uh, decorated my house for Christmas and boy, did it lift my spirits. I am just really in the Christmas mood now. Got my Christmas music playing and uh, it was great to get back in my craft room after getting all the 
when when you decorate, it kind of makes a mess before it uh, gets tidy again. Everything's all over the place. So it was nice to get my house put back together and uh, get back in my craft room. I'm going to put just a little piece in each of these corners so I don't get sagging. Not a big piece, just a little bit right there in those corners. Okay, so now we've got our frame all ready. This piece ready. There we go. And I also, on an A2 card front, I went ahead and stamped Happy Holidays on the inside. Hmm. Excuse me. And on that same um, Happy Holidays came from the Slim Slimline Pine set. That's the same one. Now, before I put this all together and I asked myself, what else is this card going to need? I didn't really want to make it a shaker, though the window is, you know, you could definitely put a layer of acetate in there and make this a shaker. But I wanted to add snow. I wanted to make this a uh, snow glistening and shiny. So I came in with a little bit of Doc Martens. And Doc Martens is a shoe polish, but it works great for adding snow to your projects. And I'm just going to use a little palette knife. And on all of the places where there's snow, I'm going to tap on the snow and it's okay if it goes out over the the lines of the image I'm just gonna put that snow in there up here on some of these leaves there's snow so I'm gonna add some snow up in there this is a great way to add snow to like Christmas tree images things like that if you and you can really just add snow to all kinds of places. Whoops, I got a little too much. You just get a little bit on your palette knife and tap it on there. Whoops, there we go. Go, try to go around his feet without covering them up. I did a little bit neater job when I was doing it originally because there we go. Now one thing with Doc Martens, it can dry out over time so you always want to keep your, your lid on well. And my last two places are right here above the door. I'm just going to tap it a little bit and right here on the little uh, launch. Okay, so now that we have that all tapped on, and I wish you could see this in person because it just adds so much dimension to your card. And now I'm going to add um, some glitter. And it's going to stick to that uh, shoe polish. And there we go. Oh, I wish you it, see how that just adds that dimensional snow. And you can lay it on really thick and use your palette knife to kind of make waves and such in it that really just give it a really dimensional look on there. It just does the great finishing touch to this image. All right. So now we're just going to finish putting it all together. So not only is um, are the red rubber stamps going to be in the, the last chance section, but there's several other um, of the, the just dies and stamps. And so you're definitely, if you've had your eye out on some things, you're going to um, want to go there and check that last chance section out because you don't want something to sell out uh, before you can get your hands on it. So. I'm going to attach this piece to my card base. There you go. That was a little loud going across there. 
and getting that on there straight. I hope so. There we go. All right, now I'm going to add my pine cones. And I'm going to add just a little bit of foam to my pine cones. It's down there where they're going to come out of the center there. Put this one down first. Yep. Now this one to be on top, so I'm going to add my foam on that side. Oops. Get it in the right spot. Yep. All right. I love the way those pine cones further kind of create that dimensional look. And the last piece is going to be from our home to yours. And on these quick strips, I leave mine connected. I don't cut them all apart, although I did cut this one off. I, I usually keep them all together. And when I die cut them, it gives me a whole bunch of them all at once. So I just have a pile that I can choose from. And you can see that on the, the first time, I stamped it in one shape like this. But for this one, I'm going to use this one. But it just is a great way to kind of quickly get a bunch of uh, little strips that you can use at any time. I just kind of have a bucket of strips over there that I... Uh, pull from just all the time in my crafting. It kind of speeds things up rather than uh, cutting each one one at a time. And I'm going to get just a little bit of the foam to put right here. And then go ahead and add my sentiment. There we go. I just love how this project came together. All right, look at that. I love the country feel and kind of the vibe going on on this uh, fun image, but doesn't the watercolor is just a lovely way to uh, highlight the, the red rubber stamps. They're just so pretty and it uh, so fun to just watercolor those. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera back. And real quick, I'm going to take a look there. I have to switch back and forth between Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll go ahead and switch my camera back. There we go. Thank you so much for joining me to watercolor today. I hope that I shared uh, some tips that will be helpful for you. If you have more questions about that kind of thing, I would love it if you go ahead and put them down in the comments and I'll definitely check back and answer um, any uh, tips that I can help you with. I would uh, love to share. If I've figured something out, I'll be glad to share it with you. But uh, don't be afraid of watercoloring. It's a really uh, fun technique and a fun process. So I hope you'll give it a try. And like I said, do check out that last chance section on the website. And uh, I think that's all I have for you today. So I hope you had wonderful holidays and I look forward to crafting with you during this uh, Christmas season. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. <laughs>